Known for the poetic rhythm of her unique prose, Delise Collins has been using the written word to communicate her passions and innermost convictions since her days as a young girl. Delise believes that relationships led by biblical principle are the ideal concept of the vision God has had for all of his children from the foundations of the earth, even before the creation of earth began. Living in a functional, functional environment amidst the turmoil of a trying and social media influenced society, this author is on a mission overflowing with purpose to shine a light in the darkness and rescue marriage from the Western Hemisphere all the way to the East. And she does that in her new book, Growing into a Mature Marriage from Kindergarten to College. And it's our pleasure to welcome Delise Collins here with her tonight. And I'm going to be uh, turning her video back on so she can join me here. Maybe in a minute. Here we go. <laughs> I don't know if my button's clicked. Let's try. There we go, and she's all good. Hi, Delise, how are you? Hi, how are you? I'm great, how about yourself? Doing excellent, excited to be here. So honored, Tattered Cover Bookstore, out of all the bookstores that I could have done this with, I'm just so grateful that you guys chose me. I'm very excited. Yes, we're happy to have you. Thank you so much for joining us. I'd, I'd love to start with, if you could tell us a little bit about what this I think you get a clear picture from the title, but I'd love to know what your book's about. Absolutely. So obviously marriage, what throws a lot of people off is the subtitle from kindergarten to college. Yeah. Some people look at it and they think it's a children's book. Other people are trying to figure out how in the world is she comparing marriage to academia? I was actually working in a fifth grade classroom the day the idea came to me. Um, so I've been married for a little over two decades. It'll be 22 years this March. Congratulations. That's a huge Thank deal. Thank you so much. And I was working in the classroom at the time that the idea for the book came to me. Um, after years of counseling um, other people and having marriage groups, uh, and then to be in the classroom with fifth grade students um, of all grades, <laughs> Um, I paused for a moment and had a, I hate to say outer body experience because that sounds so cliche, um, but the idea just fell on me like a ton of bricks that marriage is exactly like fifth grade. And then the thought continued to uh, develop and it was actually, no, marriage is like preschool and kindergarten and first grade and second grade. And it goes all the way through college, depending on that couple and what they're going through. And so I rushed home from the school and just started writing notes. And it's been a four year process. I started writing this book, I don't know, 2016. And then it was a full year of editing and publishing. Uh, but I'm really grateful that, that it's here now. Um, I guess the best way to explain the premise would be to use the kindergarten chapter as an example. So you would hope by the end of kindergarten year, your child would come home knowing their colors, shapes, and patterns. Well, the kindergarten year of your marriage, um, you would hope that you are beginning to understand and recognize colors, which I liken unto your attitude, your thoughts and emotions, and also being able to recognize that in other people um, so that you're careful not to jump on with other people's emotions if that's not going to be conducive to you being happy and productive. Right. Um, shapes would be the condition of your life, the shape and condition of other people's lives. Uh, what shape are you working toward creating for yourself and your relationships? And patterns would be the generational things that may have been handed down to us knowingly or unknowingly things we are participating in that maybe we don't want to be participating in, actions and attitudes that we're carrying out that were passed down to us through our bloodline that are actually detrimental to us having a functional relationship. Um, so that's kindergarten, colors, shapes, patterns. And the book progresses that way through each grade and gets a little bit more intense and a little bit more complicated, just like actual school. And actual marriage sometimes too, as it, it, it gets over Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Well. So, so who would you say that this book is for? And I feel like that it is about marriage, but I feel like there might be a bit of a wider audience, but who did you have in mind when you were writing it? Wow, um, probably myself. Okay. <laughs> um, and I say myself because so many people that have come to my husband and I over the years to just ask questions, 
to vent, to cry, to yell, to scream, have the exact same frustrations, questions, and challenges that we had. So I realized that everyone is the same in a lot of ways. You know, we're all human. Um, we all have the same blood running through, red blood running through our veins. And we all have the same issues and challenges. Uh, the difference is some of us get the information to exceed and go above and beyond and do better and be successful in different ventures, whether that's your marriage, your career, the way you parent your children. And some of us stay in preschool or kindergarten forever because we never look outside of ourselves and our own memories and our own experiences, our own baggage to learn what someone else might have to say that could pull us out of that grade and allow us to get better grades and graduate on to the next. Yeah. So the book is for people who uh, I'd say if you could start at teenagers, because I really address youth and uh, how important the brain is um, in our in our youth the hormones, the things that we go through, what junior high is like, and how so much of what could be instilled isn't at that stage that actually does have a lot to do with our marriage when we finally get older and get married because of the relationships we started to form and the beliefs we start to take on about who we are. Yeah. Um, so you could say this book is for anyone in uh, from middle school to you know a senior citizen, whether they're married, divorced, uh, looking to be married, never interested in getting married. It's a book that speaks to really growing up in your, within yourself because marriage is one thing, but if you don't know how to be married to yourself, you're also not going to be successful at other relationships. No. And, and that's a, that's a great point to point out of loving yourself before you really can fully love someone else. But I'm curious too about um, writing nonfiction, you know what I mean? Cause you talk about being a writer and from a very young age and, and we'll, we'll touch on that too, but this idea of writing nonfiction and how that works for you, you seemed to have a very linear, easy, not easy, um, a very, um, transparent way of like, this is kindergarten, first grade, and you worked on that, but how was it like writing nonfiction for you and still being able to tell the whole story and um, pull through from other chapters. What was that like and what appeals to you about nonfiction? Um, what appeals to me is if we're truly enjoying or seeking to enjoy life on earth and we're not looking for an escape, then nonfiction is where you're going to gain the knowledge to create the real life that you want as opposed to disappearing into fantasy. Nothing against <laughs> fiction because I have a fiction book I want to write. Um, <laughs> but even in that, I have stories and lessons to teach and yeah. help grow and mold because it's all about our brains, the way that we're thinking, you know, the, the neuroplasticity, realizing that we have the ability to adapt and change and grow and really get over ourselves so that we can move into the next level of, of what's out there for us. So um, the chronological um, order of my life um, in comparison with the grades and then putting that together to create um, a nonfiction story, so to speak, um, I guess you could just say that's built into me. I have a knack for taking complicated concepts and being able to explain it to a kindergartner, which also made this book that much easier for me to write because if people could explain marriage to all of us, like we're kindergartners, we would do much better. <laughs> right. I feel like a lot of concepts if were explained to us as kindergartners, we might do a lot better. <laughs> Don't overestimate yeah. our age. Um, but then, so you talk about that being something within yourself and obviously being a writer was something within yourself too. When did, when did you get bit by the bug, so to speak of, of writing? Wow. Um, really young. Um, my first time that I could really set a, a date on it would be, I was about 15 years old and I was sent away as a punishment. Um, my mother, ironically, was trying to get me away from my future husband because we were very serious at a very young age. Yeah. And after I exhausted every opportunity and every avenue that I had to try and get in touch with him because I wasn't allowed to be talking to him um, and everything was taken away for me to be able to communicate, I resolved to a journal. And I was like, 
I'm just going to have to write to him at the end of every single day, all the thoughts that I would have shared with him if had I been able to call him. And I did that consistently over an extended period of time, as long as I was, you know, living out in the boonies with my grandfather. And when I was able to return to the city and see, um, my future husband, I gave him the book and it was like this <laughs> thick. And I said, you have to read all of these pages. And he was like, wow. <laughs> so, He's still with you. <laughs> even after that. Yes. Even though I forced him to read. Yes. Um, so that was a very foundational part of me realizing my writing gift. Um, the next thing would be, I was about 19. Mm -hmm. We were married and Long story short, there was a, um, a lawsuit, like a court um, issue arising, and I thought it was very um, unfair, very silly. I thought it would be unwise to spend the money, you know, retaining counsel. Not something told me you can write an attorney's letter to this other attorney and have all of this squashed. And of course, you hear things like that, and you're like, there's no way I can do that. I'm 19. Yeah. I haven't been to law school. So I took the letter from their, uh, their um, attorney and I just studied it. And I was like, okay, I can do this formatting and I can use my words. And I happen to have a couple law books. I guess I'm just a nerd. And <laughs> I looked up some statutes pertaining to my case. I found something to set some precedent and the case was dropped. The other, the person actually ended up becoming a really good friend that was trying to take us to court. And he later was like, who wrote that letter? Like, who's your attorney? And I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's how my writing, um, I think I was born with it, but those were the two definitive points in time where I was like, this is, definitely what I need to be doing. There are some distractions along the way. Here I am married 22 years and a grandmother. And now I'm like, Oh yeah, that's right. Writing, you know, stick to what you're, what you're supposed to be doing. So, and it's been awesome. So what does your writing process look like for you? Do you write every day? Are you kind of one who writes for eight hour spurts, excuse, spurts, excuse me, let mm -hmm. me choke in the middle of that. <laughs> but uh, what, what does your writing process look like? Yes. Um, so I have definitely had the eight hour spurts, especially when it came to the end of finishing uh, growing into a mature marriage. There was some really long days and nights. Um, for the most part, my modus operandi would be to formulate an outline. Okay. Um, funny enough, you were asking me earlier if I have any other projects going on and my family will tell you I am <laughs> all got like 1700 projects I have a new going idea on every day I know I drive my family crazy but I'm just super super visionary but my goal as a visionary is to actually implement all the ideas that I have right. so I have outlines um for days of entire books so technically for me the books are complete I just have to sit down and fill them in because the whole format from beginning middle end is all there every concept I want to hit on every topic right you know, that I want to discuss. So for me, outlines are the way to go to get something done. Yeah. I've heard a lot of authors talk about outlines as like the spine of the, their book, if they were to compare it to a human and then the writing is them filling in the rest of the body, yes. so to speak. And so yes. that I hear that very similarly from you and that's really mm -hmm. good to know. Yes. Yeah. So can you hint at some of those projects that you're working on for, for anybody who maybe is a fan of this or that they're <laughs> taking a departure? You did hint about a fiction one. Is that yes. the future? Um, so my fiction book is called The Legacy of Fools. And it's a time travel book that oh. jumps back to like uh, BC days, maybe in ancient Babylon, Egypt, mm -hmm. Israel. And then... Um, current day America, and then also slavery days America, probably in Georgia. Another excuse for me to just travel again and do some research. <laughs> um, uh, but that story is obviously, like we said, it's going to be fiction, but when it's historical fiction, you've got a lot of truth in there. Mm -hmm. And so the idea is there's going to be a bridge that my main characters use to 
to move back and forth through time to find the person responsible for the concept of slavery. Oh, I like that. Very interesting. That's one. Um, <laughs> and then all of my other ideas are um, along the lines of this, of a how, to, how to, I have an idea, um, who moved my government cheese? Uh, it's an instructional book um, on how to get off welfare, how to yep. exit government assistance and become independent. And there's oh. a lot more ideas where that came from. <laughs> That's awesome. And, and so what, what research went into this particular book? Because you talked about, and, and you had mentioned, we had a, obviously a, a nice conversation before we got on live, but you had mentioned wanting to have like your computer with all your manuscripts and like 20 books open. So obviously you have a very extensive research project project. What did that look like process? Mm -hmm. What did that look like for this book? Yes. So for me, I have a lot of family in the educational system. Two of my sisters are teachers. Um, I've been a para on and off. I've worked in a juvenile detention facility. Um, my mother has been a para my entire life. Um, if you're watching, you don't know what a para is. It's just the teacher's assistant. Yep. Um, so I grew up in the school system, not just as a student, but from the bird's eye view of also a teacher, even as a kid. Um, so I was able to pull some actual curriculum, um, understanding what core curriculum is in our country and what those expected benchmarks are and how that changes. I talk about that in the book and intertwine that into marriage. Yeah. Um, a lot of my research would be personal experience, all of the different conversations I've had with all of the many couples over the years, um, just seeing the common cord that runs through everyone's marriage um, and how I can speak to that to really talk to a mass amount of people because so many of us have the exact same complaints about our spouses. <laughs> oh. Makes sense to me. I, <laughs> I, 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 I am not married myself, but I, I do know a lot of married couples and my parents are still married. And, and so I, I found it to be a very interesting view into a world that I don't necessarily know about, but I know about the education system. So it makes it accessible for those who may not see themselves as married or ever get married. That's why I was interested to know about who you had in mind when you originally wrote it. But learning about your recess research process is also very fascinating too, knowing that you have such a connection, having been working in the school system and having such a, a relation to it, that that was an easy connection for you to make. And then I'm, I'm curious if you don't mind talking a little bit about um, the publishing process, because that's some, some people are nervous to go into non-traditional publishing and like what that looks like. And, and if you could talk a little bit about that journey for you and what led you to make those decisions. Absolutely. Well, it started with research. I wanted to know the difference between self-publishing, traditional publishing, um, and then the, as they call it, vanity publishing. Um, within the field, within the realm of vanity publishing, you can run into a lot of scams yeah. or you can run into something where it's bona fide in that they're going to publish, print your book, get your ISBN numbers, get it on bookstore shelves, but that they're keeping, you know, an exorbitant amount of your royalties. Yep. So um, I prayed about it <laughs> and just asked for some some guidance and some wisdom. And I believe it was shortly after I had, you know, that conversation with God that I turned on the TV and I saw a commercial and I'm like, this is a commercial. This is definitely not going to be what I what I want. If they're looking for people, this probably isn't a great a great avenue. Um, but after doing some research and understanding how to spot the scams, um, understanding the depth of conventional, you know, traditional publishing. Mm -hmm. I was like, I'm just going to go this route just to get my first book out there and I will learn from it and then decide what I'm going to do next. It was a amazing experience. I went with um, Covenant Books. They are a predominantly Christian publisher uh, based out of South, South Carolina. And the process was beyond anything I could have ever expected. Um, Everything they said they were going to do and the timing that it was going to happen, the communication back and forth, the lines stayed open, and it was very seamless. The, the downside is it did take a year, and from the research I've done and other authors that I'm learning from, traditional publishing just takes time. Um, so unfortunately for the bookstores who may need that tangible physical product to sell, 
Amazon Kindle publishing is really taking off. And yeah. so I'm, I've been drooling over that. Like, you know what? I can write a book today and publish it tonight yeah. without having to owe anyone anything and all the royalties are mine. So I'm definitely going to get my feet wet in that arena. No. And that's something that, you know, there's, there's a lot of viable options in the world for writers nowadays. And it, we would be remiss to not be talking about those, especially mm -hmm. in author conversations like this, you know, there are many different paths for everyone when it comes to publishing and getting their stories out there. And so I think it's completely viable that you explore all options. And that's why I asked, because it's something that not everybody thinks about or does the research for or, or even considers it to them. They're like, oh, I can't get an agent. I'm screwed. That's not the right. way it works anymore in the world. Um, no. And so what did Which you learn? Awesome. <laughs> Yes, right. <laughs> it is. It's really cool. We get more voices out there. But what did you learn? You see, you said you learned you wanted what um, you would learn from this book. And then, you know, for future ones, maybe do the same or something different. But what are some lessons that you learned from that process? First lesson would be that to have a physical book um, is an emotional experience. Yeah. Um, in a day and age where it's not necessary to have that and where the majority of readers are downloading digital or audible, the only reason that I could think of that an author would go through that process of the traditional publishing would be because they want to say, I wrote a book and here it is. I can hold it, touch it, feel it. And this was my first one and I did that and I'm happy that I did. But moving forward, um, I would love to be in complete control of the entire process um, from front cover to back, <laughs> literally. Yep. And I have to hire my own team, you know, my own book designer, my own editor. But I'm excited about doing that and really turning my writing into a full fledged business. And I'm I'm taking steps every day to get to that point where I've got my team and all I'm doing every day is sitting at my computer. <laughs> True introvert. I just exposed myself. <laughs> That's okay. That is, you, you're, you're in good company. It's all good. <laughs> I work at a bookstore. Um, I, I'm turning back to this book specifically, but I'm curious if obviously there's a lesson to be learned in every step of the process that you give us in this book. But do you think that there's like one or two that you think are most crucial for growing in the marriage process? What a grade level mm -hmm. or, um, I'm just curious because obviously you wrote a whole book about it, right? Like yeah. this, the whole thing is important, yes. but if you, but if you think about it, is there something that's very crucial for, for people to be able to, um, go through that process? Yes, absolutely. Well, without giving away too much, <laughs> um, the foundational concept of my book is if you want to truly be happy and enjoy life because it is really short, yeah. it has nothing to do with the shortcomings and the flaws in your spouse. It has everything to do with you because you could leave that person, be by yourself, maybe or maybe not be happy, maybe, maybe not be lonely, but most people want to be with someone and when you start over with that next person after the mushy gushy feelings of newness go away you're going to be back at point a when you had made it to point d with the person that you were with prior but we give up you know we drop out of school yeah because we get so frustrated with the teacher and the learning process you know, some of us have marriage dyslexia and you're seeing everything backwards. Your communication seems to be completely um, blocked. You're speaking different languages. But like I say a lot, we're all just information or just a teacher away, a mentor away from information that can completely change our circumstances. So to answer your question, the main point the most important point would be changing you, changing the way you think, stop pulling all of your concepts and um, precepts and notions about the world and what can be for you from your own personal history, because there's so much more out there to learn. So many other people who've had different experiences. And if you're willing to open your mind to receive from those other people, you can start to make significant changes and it's powerful almost magical when you really grasp onto this you start to change you how the other person starts to just change 
But as long as you're doing this and working really hard to change them and all, sitting down to talk to them about all the things that are wrong with them and how they've up, upset you and instead of really working on what can I change about me, um, you never get anywhere. So it's really awesome when you work on yourself, how you make room for that other person to now raise themselves to the next grade. Yeah. So what happens when you graduate? Do you ever graduate from this process? Ah, that's because the question. <laughs> the question, Kaylee. <laughs> Do you ever graduate? No. <laughs> it gets better. Um, I get asked that question in many different forms. Before I wrote the book, that was another inspiration to write the book. Yeah. Um, yes, you get to a point where you're not arguing every day. You get to a point where you're not arguing every week. You get to a point where you're not arguing every month. Yeah. And, and even then, you'll have disagreements. And the people around you, if you're having those disagreements in the company of other people, will be like, and <laughs> my family and my cousins have done this to me. They're like, was that an argument? <laughs> and we're like, I guess you could call it that. We don't do that. We just discuss our di differences and what we disagree with. But you'll get to that point. So yeah. do you ever graduate? No, because we're human and we're flawed. Um, but do you get to a peaceful state of being where life is exciting and the butterflies that you had when you started dating come back? Absolutely. I think, I think that's an excellent place to end our portion of it and to move to a QA and a because I love that idea of ending on that hopeful, happy note that, you know, that obviously to get through the different grade levels is a lot of work, but the hope at the end of it, I think is, is a really crucial part um, that you incorporate well. And so I'd love to turn it over to our audience. And so anybody who's watching right now, um, some of you have already been active in the chat, but there's a chat window that's right next to um, the screen you're watching us on. And feel free to type in any questions that you might have about the book, about her writing process. Um, Delise has been wonderful and open uh, so far. And so I know we have one question. So far. <laughs> so far. I just mean in general, the whole time. I don't know. We might hit a question. You're like, I don't want to ask that. But, <laughs> <laughs> but there is one question of who, um, what are some of your writing inspirations? What authors do you admire and look up to? That's a good question. Um, so in in lieu of marriage, I'd say um, Michael and Debbie Pearl. Okay. Um, created to be a helpmate and created to need a helpmate. It's a book written for the husband, one written for the wife. That was a book given to me uh, when my husband and I decided to go seek marriage counseling about eight or nine years ago. And it sent me into a depression. It was so heavy but so necessary. Yeah. And I tried to give it to everyone and they almost, they read a few pages and they just threw it at me <laughs> because it was just a reflection of what they weren't able to, to bite off and chew and digest uh, yeah. because of their own, you know, their own ideas of what a wife should be or what a husband should be, you know, just working from their own, um, their own experiences and not willing to like open their mind and, and be flexible with their brain. Um, so that's those authors. Um, I'm actually looking behind me. I'm cheating because I have books well, that's okay. laid out on the show. <laughs> um, James Clear, Atomic Habits. Okay. Also another amazing book. He has got me up off my behind and making sure that I'm doing something every day to work toward my short-term goals and my long-term goals in a very um, simple way. It's not a painful book. It won't send you into depression. <laughs> it's I'm actually not talking any very, books back at the least. <laughs> <laughs> it's very light, very easy to digest, and it's very inspirational. Um, Napoleon Hill, I've been reading that one as like a group project with my family, Think and Grow Rich. And I read it once uh, in my 20s, and reading it again now, it means something totally different. Yeah. There's just, through the progressive revelation of, growth and maturity you will look at the same words and be able to take them totally different so that's a like a really old author that i really respect and appreciate okay. um there are so many names rolling around in my head i'm trying to um pull some more out but that's okay you gave us three really awesome ones <laughs> okay great <laughs> <laughs> I'm a visual person too. I say that whenever I recommend books in the bookstore, I have to like walk around the section we're in. So there was no cheating involved. Um, so one of the questions was, 
what is your favorite chapter and why? But I also want to add, I'm going to add my own one onto that. And what was the most challenging chapter to write? <laughs> you can cheat. <laughs> You got, okay. you got a My whole beautiful stack of books there. Might as well. <laughs> yeah, favorite favorite chapter and why, and then what was the most challenging chapter? Wow. Um, hmm. I'm going to say, yeah, I liked this one. <laughs> and that was rough, too. Okay, well, it's the same chapter. I'm happy I Great. turned to this. So seventh grade, which falls in chapter nine, um, it was the most difficult to write because um, – I had a lot of emotional uh, attachment to like, this was a big struggle for me in, in my marriage. Um, so the, the title, um, page 165, seventh grade, mean kids and bullying. Mm -hmm. And that was my biggest complaint in my marriage is I felt like my husband was so mean. So many wives say that, right. And husbands too say that about their wives. It depends on who's, you know, the dominant, personality type um because yep. we all marry our opposites lucky for us um balance right yep. <laughs> um so that was the most difficult to write i also incorporate a lot in that chapter about parenting because i don't i feel like you can't really talk about family issues and marriage without also talking about the kids and the heavy um impact that they carry in the dynamic of the marriage oh i know couples that have gotten divorced over the kids because they just could not agree on how to rear their children so i have a lot of opinions about that any of you watching that know me know that i have no shortage on opinions that's why i could write a book um, but i go in depth into parenting there and it was it was an emotional chapter for me uh, there's another subtitle in that chapter, Puberty, the Seven-Year Itch, because in seventh grade in school, we're actually going through those hormonal changes and hitting puberty and dealing with all of the social drama that comes with that. But what? also... I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> what is that? <laughs> what is that? <laughs> I didn't go through that. Um, but also seven years in marriage is what they call the seven-year itch, where you have different issues coming up usually the itch referring to you're now looking to have an affair because you're no longer interested in your spouse and you're no longer um excited the way you were originally you know comparing where you are now to how it was when it started and you start seeking for those feelings and that experience again outside of your relationship so chapter seven nice. chapter nine Seventh grade. <laughs> Seventh grade. Got you. Yes. Um, someone else, another question is, do you share any of your own challenges with being so young when you married? In the book. What do I share? Yes, I do. I want to tell all the stories, but I want you guys to buy the book. No, we yes. want you guys to buy the book. So, so yes. the answer is yes, you do. 